So that's what we're going to take up next. This is a plume initiated session going through the same thing. All right, I need to take a drink before this one. You can cut this out if you want to. Still on time, it looks like. <clears throat> okay. All right, so for the plume initiated example, the primary LU starts a session with the secondary LU, and maybe it provides a log mode name, and maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't provide a log mode name, there is no choice in this host but to use the default log mode name for the slew. But the secondary LU in this host is not an LU or an Apple, it's a CDRC, and it's probably a dynamic CDRC. So we probably don't have mode tab coded on it, and we probably don't have D-log mode coded on it. So instead, we wind up using the first entry inside IST INCLM. The first entry inside IST INCLM is pound inter. That's our APK class of service. Actually, what we would do is we would take the subreddit class of service name, we'd try to map it to an APK class of service name to see if it works. If we can find that mapping, we would use that mapping. Otherwise, we would use the APK class of service name on whatever log mode or D log mode entry that we picked. Once we got done, we send our locate find CD init into the APPN network. It has the APPN class of service name that we chose, but if the plu did not provide us with a blank on a log mode name, then we do not provide it on this request either. If it's blanks coming in, it's blanks going out. We fudged up a default log mode name for the purpose of picking that APPN class of service, and once we did, that APPN class of service is fixed. But the mode name is not, and that's because we haven't picked the subreddit class of service name yet. So now that request shows up with this interchange node that's got an APPN class of service on it, and so naturally this interchange node would use the APPN to separate a cost mapping table method, right? Wrong. That's not what happens. Why is it what happens? What side of the subarray network picks the subarray class of service? And it's the secondary LU side, which is this side over here. So when this request comes in with the APPN class of service on it, this node says, oh, I don't have to pick the subarray class of service. That's not my job. So instead, all he does is sends the subarray CD init request through the subarray network with whatever mode name came in. Maybe it's a real mode name if the plu provided one. Maybe it's the blank load log mode name if the plu provided. Either way, when that blank log mode name shows up over here and it's time to ship it into APPN again, we've got the same fiasco going on. We're in a host where we do not really have a slew definition, so we've probably got a dynamic CDRC, no mode tab, no D log mode, so we want to pick in the first entry inside IST INCLM. When we pick that first entry inside IST INCLM, we take the subarray cost name off it, we try to map it to an APPN cost name. If it works, that's the cost name that we use. But notice the subreddit cost name is not shown anywhere. And that's because once we use it to pick the APPN class of service name, we actually throw the subreddit class of service name away. The reason for that is because the subreddit cost name was actually picked for Pluinit on the response flow. So we actually picked the subreddit cost name down here. So we picked a, d a dummy log mode name, we used it to pick a dummy subreddit cost name, we used it to map it to the APPN cost name that we cannot change anymore, and yet all the rest of the information that we used to come up with that APPN cost name gets thrown away. All right, we ship the request over here. At this point, if there was no log mode name on there, we're in the secondary LU domain, we can actually choose the D log mode for the slew, the one that we really meant to use, the real default log mode name. Once we do that, we can pick the subarray cost name for this node right here, the little mini subarray network. We send our locate found reply back again. It's got the real mode name on it. When it shows up at this host, that's when this node says, oh, it's my turn to pick the subarray cost name. And guess what? He sees in the session control block the APPN class of service name has already been picked. It was sent over here on this flow. So he takes that APPN class of service name and maps it back to a separate class of service name. That's right, you heard it correctly. On the way over, we map the dummy log mode name, dummy class of service name, to an APPN class of service name, which could be completely bogus. And then when that APPN class of service name comes back here on the reply, or when we get the reply back and we see that class of service name picked, we actually take the other table, the APPN to subarray mapping table, and map that bogus APPN cost name to another, could be even more bogus, subarray cost name. So we actually go through cost mapping twice in this host. Subarray to APPN, then APPN to subarray. And you may not even end up with the original subarray cost that you started with, let alone that you one that you wanted to, because you didn't even have a mode name to use here. So we send the subarray cost name through the subarray network. The same thing basically is going to happen over here that we did over there. We have a mode name. We don't have anything to do. We send it over there without any class of service on there. But the APPN class of service was already picked. When it shows up over here, that APPN cost is used to map it back to a subarray cost. So that's basically the idea here. The idea is that subarray to APPN cost mapping, although it was a great idea, it works well for slew in sessions. It does not work well for plu in sessions. 
The only way that you can get cross mapping to work well, even for Pluinit sessions, is to make sure that the very first log mode name is chosen correctly. The default log mode name has to be chosen correctly. And the easiest way to do that is, to, of course, to have the primarily you choose the log mode name. But if not, you need to have the right D log mode name set up in just about every one of the hosts along the path. All right? So that's basically the idea. What I found out was that if you configure these VTMs so that we always pick the correct log mode name and we always pick the, frick, the correct class of service first, the first class of service, then it looks to me like you don't need the subread APPN or APPN to class of service tables at all anyway. So my take on it is, once you've got it set up so that the very first log mode name and class of service are picked correctly, if everything is set up correctly, you should not need the cost mapping tables except for one funny case, which I'll talk about later. And so my personal recommendation, and I want to make sure I make this very clear, my personal recommendation is that we convince our customers to set up their log mode tables, D log modes, and, uh, and mode tabs correctly so that you do not need to use the separate APPN and APPN to separate cost mapping tables. I would like customers to avoid using the mapping tables if at all possible. All right, so here's our summary. SLU initiated sessions work really well. The log mode name is always chosen by the OLU equals SLU side, no matter what network you're in. So cost names are always chosen using a non-blank log mode name rather than a blank log mode name. The APPN and separate class of service names are chosen on the same flow in the SLU to PLU direction, and that means the cost mapping works intuitively. PLU initiated sessions do not work nearly as well. The log mode name chosen by the OLU or the DLU it doesn't really matter. So sometimes class of service names have to be chosen outside the SLU domain which means dynamic CDRC and typically no mode tab or D log mode. It also means that cost names may be chosen using a blank log mode name outside the SLU domain, which means you're picking the wrong log mode name, which resolves to the wrong APN class of service name. The other problem we see with Pluin is that APN and separate cost names are chosen on different flows. The APPN class of service is chosen on the request flow from PLU to SLU. The separate cost name is chosen during the response phase from SLU to PLU. Cost mapping kind of works, not nearly as intuitively, and you have to do a little bit more setup in order to make sure that they're going to work correctly. So here are the considerations that we have to talk about. Remember, we always use the SLU RDTE to choose the class of service and log mode names, which means it's often outside of the SLU domain now in an APPN network, which means it's often using a dynamic serial C, which means it's often we're picking the default log mode entry. So if we have a log mode name and we look it up and we can't find it, we typically take the default IST cost DF entry instead, and you wind up with every SLU in session using pound connect, for example. And in the PLU initiated case where he doesn't provide a log mode name, we wind up using the first entry inside IST INCLM for the SLU's log mode entry, which resolves to pound enter for everything. So typically on SLU init requests, everything shows up pound connect if it's not set up right. On PLU init requests where the mode name is not being provided or where you don't have it set up correctly, we might also pick pound enter for all the sessions. Those are the, typically the most common problems that I see from customers. Cost mapping table for PLU initiated sessions is not very intuitive. We go separate APP on the request phase and APP to separate back on the response phase. We could end up with a completely different summary cost. And if we didn't start with the right one to begin with, then it's even worse. So that's another reason why cost mapping really does not work very intuitively. But the biggest problem right here is that the PLU does not always provide a log mode name. And there's no way that I can solve this one for you short of a lot of pre-definition Unless, of course, you can go to your application folks and convince them to change the application to provide a log mode name on the request. Typically, they know what kind of session they're starting anyway, so they should be able to pick an application on a log mode name. The application should. So, all right, so again, the, typically there are ways to set this up so that sessions always establish successfully, but they may not be using the class of service that you want. So you actually you have to look for the unexpected results. Otherwise, you may start an interactive session that's actually using pound match or something like that, and you won't know it until you hit the enter key, and it takes 20 minutes for you to get your cursor back. 